success, which is great, but they're not focusing on making more out of less. I've talked to so many of you, and you've said, no, I don't have any money. I'm not paying attention to my money. And the biggest problem is when you do make it big and you don't know what to do with your money. Because then what happens is some financial advisor is going to come by and give you a slick presentation. They're going to give you an elevator speech and a pitch, and you're going to take it. And you're going to lose everything that you have worked for. Not one of you in this room has an excuse why you aren't dealing with your money. Do you know your FICO score? Do you have credit card debt? Do you know how to get out of credit card debt? Do you know what type of retirement account to have? Do you know how to buy a home? Should you be buying a home? Are you leasing a car? You should never lease a car. Investments, do you know what kind of investments? You don't know any of that, most of you. And if you really want to be powerful in life, because it's the power when he gets on the stage and he starts wiggling his bum, right? <laughs> until you are powerful over your own money. Yep. How you think about it, how you feel about it, and how you invest it. But no, 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 you're all so busy on your ideas and creating the next Facebook or whatever you want to create that you're not paying attention to money today. And I just want to give you a very quick example. If I were to ask all of you in this room, right, if you had credit card debt, do you have 401k loans? Do you have mortgage debt, student loan debt, any kind of debt? This whole room would stand up. Debt is bondage, people. You will never have financial freedom if you are in debt. So it's really, really important that if you want to be powerful in life, you have to be powerful over your own money. Power attracts people. People control money. When you are powerful, you attract money. When you are powerless, you repel people. Nobody wants to be around some whimpering little powerless thing. They like to be around powerful, happy people that lift them up. But if you're powerless, you repel people. People control money. So if you are powerless, you repel money. What makes you the most powerless in life when it comes to money is debt. So stay out of it, get out of it, and get powerful. You can do it, every single one of you can. You know, sometimes you look at people like us and you go, what do they know? You know, they have money. They're, we did have a pot to piss in people, Literally. right? Yeah. And it was easier for him to piss in his pot than me. <laughs> Yeah, but I, I was raised by, by a single mother, so believe me, I, I understand what she's talking about. Call right, yeah. the top of squat, you'll be all right. Uh -huh. Very good. She always tells you to put that toilet seat down. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you You know when you go in an airplane and you always go into the bathroom and the toilet seat's up, you know when that's been in there. Well, don't worry about it. I always put the toilet seat. Okay, no. I've been raised by a woman, a woman and a man. See? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> say behind every great woman is another woman. <laughs> That's how I feel about myself. But let me, let me know, just to add on to what you're saying real quick, because I also have a, how I break down success for people. First you succeed, and it's kind of like what Susie's talking about, is you make it, so you make the money. Alright? Then it's success. This is where you gotta learn how to maintain it. Alright? Then you become successful. But, if you break down the word, whether it's succeed, success, or successful, there's a word suck in it. <laughs> so now with success, okay, now you're giving people access to suck in excess. <laughs> and like that, I mean, it's the truth. So what am I saying? She's saying, yeah, you make it, now you got this money, now you got a financial advisor. Let's put myself, for example, okay? Any money that's generated, now you have a manager, you have taxes. You have agents, you have production that you have to invest back into, dancers, bands. By the time you really break this down, 
I may walk away with 30% of that, if that, okay? Once we invest everything back into it. So really what, what makes me happy is to be able to, from the, from the large number, walk away with 10% clean after everything to be able to enjoy my lifestyle, okay? Now when you learn how to really budget your lifestyle, and I think one of the key words here would be managing your lifestyle, there's a lot of things that you need, and there's a lot of things you don't need. Like she was saying, there's certain people that'll come and supposedly advise you on your money. But I've sat down with plenty of bankers, plenty of investors, plenty of advisors, who when the crisis happened, they were a part of the crisis. I go, so how are you gonna be advising me? <laughs> if your money got jammed up. Okay, and my favorite line for bankers that I sit with them, and actually one of my bankers is here right now, but he was here, he's here right now because he gave me my first loan for my first property 15 years ago. But he looked at me in my face, and excuse my French, I don't speak it, but he says, you're getting fucked on this loan, I'm just letting you know that. But at least you can say you got your first property. It's your decision. I took the decision, but at least he was straight up. And like we say in Spanish, cuenta clara con sepa mitad. Still my banker, still my friend. And I sit down with guys that I know that come with game, you know, they talk a good game, and wear good suits, at least they think they are. <laughs> yeah, because for me, a good suit is if you got it on sale, Bob and Bill, that's <laughs> you know, It's not what you wear, it's how you wear it. And I tell them all the time, I say, look, I got this record coming up. I'm about to invest in my own record. This is what the promo campaign is going to be, video campaign is going to be, and um, touring and marketing campaign is going to be X amount. Well, let me tell you what my ROI is going to be on this. Even my worst record is going to be this. Can you give me that within a year? No, what are we talking about? So you got to find things that you can invest into yourself and understand what the outcome is going to be. You're never going to predict the outcome. So I'm going to make out and do that. advice I've held throughout my life. I just have a question. In today's economy, is the 12 month emergency fund still advisable? Because there's other uh, advisors on television who say just three months, just six months, bare bones, etc. What is your advice, madam? They're idiots. <laughs> <laughs> right? and, and let me tell you why. All right, everybody, go back to 2007. Maybe some of them were even born in 2007. <laughs> right? But go back, right? And you lost your job, you lost everything, you were working on this tech thing, and all the starts, startups went down. Nobody had any money to invest, nobody wanted to touch you, they didn't do an IPO because the markets were going down and down, and you couldn't find anything to do. Think it took you just three months to find another job? Think it took you six months to find another job? If you were lucky, you found another job in eight months for 50% of the money that you were making before that happened. So you need to know that you are going to be secure. And the pat answer is three months, six months. Oh, please give me a break. Lifetime. You need as much money in the bank that makes you feel secure. Don't go fooling yourself. It's okay. I can charge on a credit card. I can do this. So you should have at least six, eight months, not six months, not three months. I like to see you have eight months to one year. Because it's not just about the economy. What if you get sick? What if you're hit by a car? What if something happens crazy in this 
where we live in the craziest world I've ever seen in my life right now. And the only way you can take craziness out of that is for you to make yourself secure. The government's not going to do it for you anymore. The economy may not do it for you anymore. But you can do it for yourselves. And you do it by building a solid foundation. You have an emergency fund. You get out of credit card debt. You start to save money. You buy a home if it makes sense. You do these things in order, and you build up. But if you're doing all this and you, something happens to you and you don't have an emergency fund, you're in credit card debt. Now you're in debt and you can't pay your credit card bills. Now you've ruined your FICO score. Now you've really screwed up your life. So, yeah, at least an eight-month emergency fund. <laughs> there you go. I can, I, I can add on to that because we live by, by a certain rule that says you should always be able to weather the storm. You betcha. And I look at it where you got to be able to weather a Category 7 hurricane, which, by the way, doesn't exist yet. All depends on climate change at this point, but, okay? You can put that and apply that philosophy, my friend, and be all right. Hi, I'm over here. Well, you know, yeah. Yeah, here. <laughs> okay, um, so my name is Karen. I come from Colombia. I'm a 22-year-old entrepreneur that is passionate, crazy, obsessed with jump-starting the economic growth of my region through education and technology. Yes. So this question is for you, um, my dear people. I admire you, first of all. Your Thank story you so is amazing, especially because you believe as much as me in education as a perfect vehicle to change our region. So based on that, and because I know you funded SLAM, the charter school, I wanted to ask you what do you think if every education system, but you know, especially in Latin America, should be changing to make education more efficient. In my opinion, teaching kids about entrepreneurship, which is what I do from like the first grade, it's a way, great, great way to do is start changing their mindset at an early age. That's thing number one. Thing number two, since <laughs> thing number two, I gotta remember all this, remember that. <laughs> This one's short, I promise. So, thing number two is, since you know, um, I know you love education as much as I and me and my sisters do, we prepared this special booklet for you okay. because we want to do this project with you, education and technology in Latin America, and I have it like right here. I would love to hand it if to you. Want, if you want to come hand it, then I'll, I'll, I'll so answer the question. Or the questions, or the paragraph, or... <laughs> Okay, uh, okay, as far as entrepreneurship and as far as education, all right, yeah, I don't know if we hear them on the speaker right now. Hey, I learned my first form of entrepreneurship was in the streets of Miami. The economy of Miami in the 80s, what boosted our economy, okay, and we got the Tremendous return on investments <laughs> and fucking astronomical evaluations <laughs> was this thing called cocaine. Yeah, and I grew up all around that. But it taught me about guys that understood what it was to maintain it. You don't want to be in that life always. You know where that life's going to take you. Prison of death is really that simple, or a snake, so you might as well be walking dead. I didn't want none of that right there, but that's the only thing I knew at a certain time. So to maintain, these are the guys that would get whatever they had, and they went from La Pequeña Habana to La Sabocera. You know, they started to, from Little Havana to Westchester. Started to build their lives and trying to get out. That was entrepreneurship for me. The guys that opened a long landscaping company or a dry cleaner or whatever it may be going, that's not my life, but hey, it was my avenue. Well, guess what? I'm in the same business now. It's called music. The raw my product, the more you get addicted, and guess what? The more the business grows. Now we got to find a way to maintain it. So that was my first step of entrepreneurship. But there's certain things, I don't regret anything in life, but certain things I wish I would have had more of was people in school that gave a fuck about me. They did it. In my lifetime, I've been about 20 to 25 schools, and it all depends on how many times I went to each one. Okay, that's how we get there. Never been a troublemaker, always been around some trouble. Just a part of my life. And where I'm going with education is because my mother always told me no one's dumb, no one's stupid. You just got to learn how you learn. And me personally, you know, um, thank you.
Me personally, I'm not the best reader. I'll read my ass off, but I won't remember what I read in the first page at the third page. <laughs> Just how my mind works. But I can watch, I can listen. That's how I learned that I was good at learning. And that's how we developed SLAM. So SLAM comes in sports, leadership, arts, and management. What did we do? We took the curriculum and flipped it. Same curriculum, same old orange shit that you go to school. Same thing. I mean, let's be real. How many of y'all really like algebra? So what did we do? We took algebra and we said that X is the 40 yard line, Y they got six seconds, and Z is they need six points. Kids love football, it's during the football season, they're engaged, education is all of a sudden sexy. I can't even get these kids out of the school at this point. All right? And mind you, I don't do this by myself. This is an amazing team, amazing teachers, amazing uh, administrative staff, and amazing partners. But I'll tell you this much. One thing I think that we really need to teach these kids, other than entrepreneurship, is what to do with the in immense access to information we have right now. How to really utilize that. Because the phone's a new dope, baby. That's what it is. I grew up around drug addicts, alcoholics. I understand what it is to be addicted. And the first thing in addiction is this long river called denial. That's the first thing. And we gotta teach these kids that they gotta run the phone, not the phone run them. If they got, you know, if you have all this access to information, you gotta understand that because if not, you're gonna get drowned in it. It's happening right now to us as a society. It's the tail wagging the dog at this point. We're all looking at the wrong things. And we gotta educate these kids how to be able to maneuver and navigate that. And, and this is a word I don't like to use, but I'll use it here. They gotta learn how to manipulate it. That to me is one of the biggest things that we're starting to implement in school right now. And entrepreneurship is obviously going to be a part of that because this phone gives, it, gives them the access to do whatever they want to do in life. You just got to direct them in the right way at this point. And I'll leave it on this note, and this is real shit. Listen to this. What's the best story in the Bible? Or I would say the one everybody knows, which is Adam and Eve, right? What did Eve bite? She bit the apple. All of us are biting the fucking apple. Yes, my friend, look at the logo, it's right there for you. <laughs> they complain with you. But they're making billions of dollars off us, and we gotta learn that we, we can empower ourselves like what we're speaking about, off of the things that they're doing with us. And that to me is the most important thing with the kids. The question was long, the answer was long, the other side. <laughs> Hello, good evening. It's an honor for me to be here today in front of both of you and address well, you. Yeah, all right. Hi, uh, so hi Susie, hi Pitbull, my name is Maria Lopez. I'm a certified public accountant. The question is for you, Susie. Uh, in 2010, I saw you on stage live in this center for an Oprah Winfrey event, and it was you who inspired me to take action. I have built my career 25 years with the big four, PricewaterhouseCoopers and Ernst Young, and I left them to build my own enterprise. Today I host a radio show in South Florida where I inspire South Florida to take control over their finances. And my dream is to become Susie Orman and Espanol. Yeah. I want to empower the U.S. Hispanic community in this country. So thank you for that. Thank you. But I have a question for you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> to inspire others, yes. you have to be what you want them to become. Yes, ma'am, and I have. Right. You can't just teach in words. You have to teach and speak in truths. Yes. Truths that rock their soul. So you have to be financially independent. You have to be financially strong. You have to be all those things. And while you may want to be the next Susie Orman in Espanol, <laughs> I, want you, I want you to be the next you. Because you have what it takes to be better than I ever was. You have what it takes to create newness. Never want to be anybody else other than yourselves. Thank and you that is the key to success. Thank We're all so busy trying to be everybody else, we don't even know who the hell we are and we're the boss. Yes, thank you. The reason I say that is because I want to, I want to acknowledge who you are thank you. for the country and for the world. And yes, I am Maria Lopez. And I will do it and complete my mission for the U.S. Hispanic community. So thank you for that. Maria Lopez, you should have taken your cue from the woman in front of you, and you should have said, "Hey, 
Armando here her proposal, you should have said, and I want you to be on my radio show. student at Johnson Wells University and my question was for both of you um, one was about the student debt epidemic that we're facing and then the education and how you feel that um, college and the education into the workforce intertwine okay this point guard you want to go first yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell is he talking about now that was even English. That was English. That was English. Oh God, that's not even, I think we're talking basketball or something like that. So here's the thing. We have $1.3 trillion of student debt as we both sit here in front of all of you. We have tens and tens of thousands of students that can't afford to pay that student loan debt back. And I think it's a travesty that you can't claim bankruptcy on it. I think it's a travesty that this administration just took away the ability to have low interest rates forever, and they're going to go back up on all of you. And I can go on and on about it, but this is what I think. You have to be crazy to get yourself in debt, to go to a university that doesn't do squat for you. Right? A university or a school doesn't define who you are. You define your school. Right? I never got a grade above a C when I went to college. The chancellor came to me once after he knew I had money, and he said, don't you think you want to support the University of Illinois? And I said, what did they ever do for me, sir? What did they ever do? What people did, you know, a little known fact was John Belushi was my roommate for four years uh -huh, at the University of Illinois, because my real roommate was Judy Jacklin, who eventually married, and so with Judy came John, so I had a real education there. <laughs> Until I looked like a clean cut woman. Yes. <laughs> but I know we have a few things in common, but we'll talk yeah, about yeah, we'll that. Talk about that later. Okay. <laughs> um, so I think you have to be nuts to go into debt to go to school. If you don't have the money to go to school and you have to take out these loans, go to a community college. Half the entrepreneurs that are out there that are billionaires, thank you, right? They never finished college. So I just think it's a travesty to come out of school and have one debt that you're tied to for the rest of your life. Well, Thank you. Yeah, hey. <laughs> you're welcome back there, Pink. Uh, I think the best university in life is just that, the university of life. And with these schools, I think sometimes what they do is they teach you how to think in the box instead of out the box. Exactly where you know, she, she didn't ask the question of, of Susie and myself, maybe coming on her radio show. That's that out the box mentality. That's that uh, move or shake or go get her. I, I guarantee you, after the day, you're going to ask every question that's on your mind and your gut tells you to do. Because that's what failure does to you. That's what taking a hit, getting knocked down does to you. It puts that, in layman terms, fucking in your system. And a lot of these schools don't do that. And in turn, what do they do is obviously. They're charging you for something that you're learning. What better than to be living life and you're not getting charged for it? You know what I'm trying to tell you with that? And the reason, go back to SLAM real quick, we're giving these kids that are getting lined up college prep classes. And, and mind you, these are kids that are 92% on free lunch. These are kids that I've taken out of neighborhoods like Little Havana, Overtown, Halapada, Liberty City, Wynwood. I mean, kids that need it, you know? But the good thing is, is that we're setting them up for they can make an educated decision on what they want to do later on in their life. But it has a lot to do with what, I, I didn't catch your name from Colombia, I'm sorry about that. But yeah. come on Karen, sorry Karen. Entrepreneurship, and entrepreneurship is that. Ownership, control your own destiny. And being in debt, obviously that's not gonna happen. I didn't even make it out of high school, you get me? But you gotta have that fighter, you gotta have that spirit, you gotta be that go-getter and understand that, I go back to it, failure is the mother of all success. 
That's what makes this journey fun, because if you were always winning, then how the fuck could you really appreciate a win? How would you appreciate it if you don't understand what a loss is? So that's, I think, what we have in common is, is poverty, being failed by the system, being always told no, shouldn't, wouldn't, couldn't, can't, never will, and that empowers us in order to fight the world, and then it becomes, it doesn't become a fight, it becomes more like a dance. Yeah. Uh, and obviously, that is not going to help you with that dance. student loan debt, it is the most dangerous debt that is out there. So don't skip it, make your payments, clear it away, it should be your number one priority because again, it is not a debt that you can discharge in bankruptcy. This is this is the last question, it's over here. This is uh, for Armando, Armando, it's the 305. Yes sir. My name's JC. Woo! I'm the CEO of Redemption Music, Redemption Entertainment. And first of all, I want to say uh, what an inspiration you have been to a lot of people. It means a lot, Jason. Thank you. And uh, we have a relationship which uh, you're probably going to remember here in a moment. So I'm a Cuban, <laughs> Cuban American, right? You know, first gen. Uh, I'm in a place called Park City. I invested in some real estate out there. And um, I uh, was involved with a, uh, a venue called Perios. So back in the 90s, I'm saying, you know what? You know, we need to bring this guy out here. And they said, who? And I know this Cuban. Come on, JC. You're, like, You're Cuban, right? Another Cuban out here? And they said, yeah. And this was Thursday, October 1st, 2009. I brought you out to Harry. <laughs> Do you remember that? <laughs> he went up before, before, before glasses and his vodka that he had backstage, he would have remembered that. I, I, I don't remember what I did last night, but, <laughs> but in any case, uh, in any case, I appreciate the opportunity. One thing that we valued and one thing that I learned from you and I did, I was following your career was you're a man of your word. And uh, that's one thing that we all need to really focus and realize that it's a commodity. Um, that it's hard to to distinguish, it's hard to find these days, but keeping your word and your work out there, and I want to commend you for that. Oh man. Te quiero, mi bro. Oh, So, we have about one and a half minutes left. And I think they're already. Yeah, they're ready, they're ready for the party. Yeah. There you go, you got it. There you go. Sorry about that. No problem. Is that all of you really do need to learn about money. And we have education question over here, and who's going to teach you about money and where you go to learn about the personal finance. Not necessarily what stock to buy, what that, it's little things that really rule your lives. So it's a gift from all of us on stage and from Emerge to all of you. If you go to suzyu.com, that's S-U-Z-E-U.com, you'll see a place that you can put in a gift code. The gift code is Emerge. I have 300,000 students right now taking the course. Obviously, they paid, you will not. And that course is there for you free. And if you want, put it out on your networks. Tell everybody that word. Have the whole world take it. Because the, the Emerge, again, you go to suzyu.com, and the gift code is Emerge. And take that course. It's got seven lessons in it. Every time you pass the test, your name gets put into the little pile there. And every month, we pick one name, and we give $5,000 a month. So if you win, if you pass seven exams, your names go in there seven times, and you can win again and again. So. That's my gift from me to all of you. Thank you. But before, before we leave, I just want to say uh, thank you to Manny Medina and the Medina family. I want to say it's a, definitely an honor to be a partner in Emerge and to be able to be a sound off for Latin America and also the whole world for ideas that people do not believe in and don't make it to the Silicon Valley's alleys or paradise or beaches or whatever it is, okay? <laughs> And we're able to do what we do best, which is believe in ourselves, fight hard, <clears throat> and accomplish. No? And 
With that said, JC, thank you for your words. I appreciate it. And being a first-generation Cuban-American that believes in me, Thursday I will be <laughs> inducted into the Writers Hall of Fame next to Jay-Z. So, it was good folks like you that had the vision and understood the talent that allowed us to do what we're doing right now. Music has been the vehicle, it's been the avenue, and an amazing opportunity to be able to teach you guys about certain things, hopefully give you guys advice on certain things you can do in your life because I've definitely been the one that they said would never do it, can't, won't, shouldn't, never will happen like I said before. So I flipped it on their ass and it's real simple. Can't, if you look at it, there's a word can in it. Won't is the word one. The word don't is the word do. And the word impossible is I'm possible. And everybody is possible. Like I said, it's a Thank you, Suzy Pitbull. Weren't they amazing? Let's give it up one more round.